the primary election of uh, PDP that took place on the 8th of December 2014, in which uh, the irregularities of that primary was very glaring. Before we could even start the process of uh, election, the delegates that were not supposed to be delegates were already inside the, the stadium. Uh, and so it was, it was sheer irregularity uh, of unprecedented proportion. We saw all that. But we know that it is very difficult for you to prove uh, such things when you go to court. Because when you make allegation of crime, you have to prove in your reasonable that. So we didn't even go with the issue of irregularity. But we know that it's things like this. They may be in a hurry to do certain things that we actually, you know, uh, 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 get caught, they will get caught up. And they did. When eventually he became the candidate of PDP, we sought to look at the documents he submitted. Now, issue of tax is very critical. It's a constitutional requirement that everyone who wants to do occupy position today in Nigeria under any political party, one of the requirements in the guidelines of the political party is that you must have paid your tax uh, for three years as and when due. Section 31, subsection 6 says if it is found out that he has disclosed wrong information, misleading information, or false information, he is liable to be disqualified by the court. And so when we found all that, we commenced our proceeding by originating summons and found out that, yes, they agreed that on the face of the tax paper, they were all, you know, uh, uh, false, but that it was a mistake. So which in law is an admission? Now, the point is that if it is a mistake, on the face of it, you are not qualified to have participated in the electoral process. Because the law says you must have been qualified. And so if your papers is a mistake, which shows you are not qualified, on the face of it, you, are not, you shouldn't have participated in that election. And so the court now had to now say, does it mean that the man that came second, because Dr. Uche Samson Oga came second in that primary? Will he now go home empty-handed? The court said no. Even though election had taken place, and this man has won, yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Okezi Bazo, and has been sworn in. If he was not qualified to have participated in the general election, the proper order to make is to ask him to vacate the seat because the PDP as a party should have presented a qualified candidate for the general election. Now that the Supreme Court has held in OT versus uh, INEC that PDP is the winner in the election of 2015, so PDP is the party that's supposed to now also replace the candidate that was not qualified. And that is what actually happened uh, in that particular case on the 27th of June. So Dr. Sam Sinuchoga was uh, ordered to be sworn in immediately. One, the other was that INEC should issue him with a certificate of return immediately. The chief judge of Abia State should also swear him in immediately. And so there was no contrary order to that particular judgment. So it is an extant judgment, it is extant law. Now they have filed appeal, and I want to explain the issue of appeal. Appeal does not operate as a stay. Every elementary you know, uh, student of law knows that appeal does not operate as a stay. You still have to obtain an order of stay before you can stay execution of judgment. So I know for the first time, which is also very historical, and which is all very historic, and also very important for us in our development of our law and judicial system, obey the court's judgment and issue him with a certificate of return. And he was supposed to be sworn in as the court has ordered, in the absence of any contrary order. He got to Omaha only to discover that the chief judge and the president of the Customary Court of Appeal, I mean, the, the, the one that is in charge of the Customary Court of Appeal there in uh, Omaha, they have all disappeared or maybe kidnapped or they, 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 they all went in hiding. And so there was a black market injunction that was obtained in a nearby high court in Omaha. That order cannot stand. It's clearly a nullity because it was is a court of coordinate jurisdiction with the Federal High Court. So the only court that can reverse the judgment of the Federal High Court is a higher court and not a court that has the same jurisdiction, that shares the same jurisdiction, shares the same power with the Federal High Court because it is called a court of coordinate uh, jurisdiction. So it has no power, it has no capacity under the law in order to reverse a decision of a Federal High Court that was subsisting. And secondly, that particular ruling of the Pintari murder was based upon a wrong premise of law. He was quoting section 143, which I have told you here of the Electoral Act, that that particular section is only applicable to judgment delivered by a tribunal. So in the absence of any stay order, in the absence of any reversal of that judgment, Dr. Samson Uche, OON, today, Oga, is the governor of Abia State. Because when you issue that 
that particular certificate of uh, return, the implication is that the earlier one you have issued is cancelled. And so the man that is sitting there, is sitting there illegally. He has no right to declare public holiday. He cannot withdraw money from the bank. Because what we hear now is that monies are being withdrawn. What we hear that is declaring public holiday, whereas he is no longer the governor of the state. What he should do is to vacate. Our people are making a, a similarity with the issue of a murder case. Or if somebody, you know, commits murder, and there is a court judgment in which he is to be convicted, I mean, uh, uh, killed, and he has filed an appeal. You know, you have to wait until the appeal is uh, exhausted because the fact that when you kill him, he's gone. The case of murder cannot be similar with the case of pre-election matter, in which somebody who ought to have been the proper candidate is not being denied since 2002 or 14, and up to now, he has not assumed position, and somebody is there who is not supposed to have been there, collecting salaries, taking decisions on behalf of the state, whereas he was not supposed to be there in the first place. So it is not a similar case. We must make that distinction. In that particular documentified, there is a column that says, you, the declarant, every information you have given there is attributable to you and you are held responsible for it. And if it is found out to be false, misleading, inaccurate, that particular uh, section says, I am liable to be disqualified. He signed it under oath and before the High Court. And so it is a statement under oath. So if he says, if the statement that he has given is attributable to him, and that statement has now been found to be misleading, false in its entirety, I should be disqualified. The court found it to be so. And so went ahead and disqualified him. We didn't sue for, we didn't go to court for forgery. We did not allege evasion of tax. What we allege is that in the form you submitted, you made a false declaration. A lot of wrong information is also going about that the Federal High Court has no power or jurisdiction to order a candidate that did not participate in the entire process of the election to become a governor. That is a wrong statement because the Supreme Court recently, in the case of Rev and Iyotom, or Iyotom made a, a pronouncement that if it is found in a pre-election matter, that the man you, the party presented for the general election was not qualified, but that the other candidate that was supposed to be qualified was not presented. The court says it has power under the law to make that other man to be an elected uh, person who will be sworn in. It's elected decision of the Supreme Court and has not been overruled. And that court, that court took into consideration section 141 of the Electoral Act. People are quoting that came, according to them, came to correct Ainek, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Morotimi Amechi versus Ainek. I tell you, Morotimi Amechi and Ainek is still the judgment and still the correct statement of law up to today. In a pre-election matter, if the wrong candidate is presented by the political party, in an election and that party goes ahead to win that election and the right party now comes to court asking for that particular election to be validated and the court so fine the court will the court will ask, ask the other man who came second to be sworn in it happened recently in kogi where below that came second was presented to run conclude the election that took, you know took place the remaining election when the first uh, man that, that that won died how do how do how do, do will bill he will of course is a constitutional requirement he will really be sworn in uh, he will really take his oath of office and be sworn in so it's, it's, it goes without saying he cannot start acting when he has not taken oath of office mm. Mm. Judge. Yes. No, no, he will, he will, does, does it mean that he's going to keep, uh, be in hiding forever? He will come out. You know, certain steps must be taken in order to make sure that the chief judge uh, comes out. But even if he doesn't come out, there are alternatives and all that. And there are alternatives. So we will know, we know that the chief judge will eventually suffer. Because it's a novel case. Issue of tax has never been an issue. Is that people have always lost out on the issue of forgery. Not, not false declaration. This is the first time somebody will come that somebody has declared falsely on issue of taxation because people don't take it serious. And now, meanwhile, you are a public officer who will go and manage other people's taxes and you're not paying tax. As I went you, even a matter as small as contract, you can't get it if you don't pay tax. Then some position as serious as governorship, president, national assembly member. Issue of taxation is serious because these are ones going to manage our public resources. They manage your tax, they manage my tax. So why don't I, why can't I pay tax before going to manage? Your, whose own are you going to manage when you have not paid yours? So from now on, we want to sanitize the, that system where people who are aspiring to go to public office must be responsible, pay their taxes and when due, and tell their age correctly, and also disclose their.
their uh, their qualification. Don't go to University of uh, Idumota and then declare that he went to Soka. And then somebody who happened to be a senator also lost his uh, uh, position of a president because there was a misspelling of his name and he lied about his name. So if things like this have happened before, even before now, this is the time for us to re refine Nigeria and allow public officers to tell the truth about whatever they are declaring. So that next time when they give you paper to submit, you must look at it very well. You don't go and conjure papers and do all manner of things and then submit and think you are qualified when, when you are not qualified in the first place. So let's begin to sanitize Nigeria and journalists must help us.